Matthew chapter 7, if you have it, say amen. amen. Beginning at verse 1, it says, Judge not that ye be not judged. For with the same judgment that ye judge, you shall be judged. And with the same standards that you use, those standards will be used against you. And why is it that you're looking at the speck that's in your brother's eye and not taking into consideration the beam that's in your own eye? Uh, how is it that you say to your brother, let me pull the speck out of your eye, and behold, you don't pull the beam out your own eye, you hypocrite? First take the log out of your eye, and then you'll be able to see clearly as to how to take the speck out of your brother's eye. Verse number 15, beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are raving wolves. Ye will know them by their fruit. The men gather grapes of thorns, or figs of thistles. Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but corrupt trees bring forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth forth no good fruit will be cut down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruit shall ye know them. I want to preach this morning as the Spirit shall guide with this thought in our minds. Mind your own business. So here in this first teaching, Jesus begins to talk to them about something that is important to learn if you're going to walk in love and live in community. And that is, he said, you've got to learn how to not be judgmental. Now, that, now the word there for judge is a very interesting word you all in the Greek. Don't miss this now. It means to seek the power to manipulate and oppressively control in the name of concern. Oh don't miss that now. It says that you seek the power to manipulate an individual or to control an individual under the auspices of concern. In other words, people who judge or people who are always being critical are people who seek to control you and then justify it by claiming that they do it out of concern for you. Yeah. Ain't nobody saying nothing. The other thing that, you, that we do, you all, in judging, watch this. When you judge people, you come to conclusions about them, although you know little, if anything at all, about them. That is, you've never formally met them. You've never held a conversation with them. You've never spent any significant time with them. You've put forth no real effort to get to know them, yet you feel qualified to offer some commentary about them. Preach, Pastor Davis. You don't know them, you ain't never met them, you ain't never hung out with them, you ain't never ate no bread with them, you ain't never had a cup of water with them, then what qualifies you to speak to anything concerning them? As a matter of fact, look at your neighbor and say, before you judge me, get to know me. Jesus said, judge not so that you don't get judged. Don't miss the implication of that. Judge not so that you don't get judged. The implication is, you got some stuff in your own life that would qualify you for being judged. And if you don't want to be brought up on charges, be careful about who you levy charges against. Talk, Chris Davis. That, that, that's where the title of the sermon comes from, mind your own business. See, the title does not mean ignore what's going on or pretend like you don't know what's going on. The title means before you try to deal with my stuff, make sure you've dealt with your own stuff. In other words, make sure you got your business straight before you try to tend to somebody else's business. Jesus said, remember your own shortcomings. Remember your own sins. Remember your own struggles. Remember your own challenges. Remember your own situations. Are you hearing me? Because if you don't, you'll be guilty of being a pot that called a kettle black. I told them this morning, listening to 745 sir. I picked it up somewhere along the way, you know what I'm saying, about the pot calling the kettle black. I ain't never hear my big mama say that. But can I tell you what she did say? She said, butter can't talk about lard because both of them greasy. <laughs> Let me say this. When I understand the grace of God in my own life, if I know something on you, I'm going to come to you. See, it takes a coward to go behind somebody's back. See, it takes real courage to come to you. 
and when I come to you, I'm not coming to condemn you, but to help you face it so you can fix it. Hello? Because I love you too much to let the potential inside of you be destroyed by the devil. See, here's the thing. See, the devil never counted on us loving one another enough that we would be willing to come to one another. Are you hearing me? What he does not understand is that the way I deal with you sends a message to God about how I want God to deal with me. The way you deal with me sends a message to God about how you want God to deal with you. Touch your neighbor and say, treat me right. Touch your neighbor and say, treat me right. Because the way you deal with me communicates to God how you want God to deal with you. Tell him again, say, treat me right. The first thing, the first thing, if you're not going to judge other people, the first thing is you've got to ask yourself, what do you see in the mirror? When you look in the mirror, what is it that you see? Notice what the text says. It says, judge not so that you don't get judged. Because whatever you judge with, that's what you're going to get judged on. Then he goes on to say, how can you see a speck in somebody else's eye when you got a beam or a log in your own eye? This is about to get good now. He said, how can you see a speck in their eye and you got a log in your eye? Jesus said, now they ain't got a speck, but you got a whole law. Hmm. Now the last time I checked, I ain't the smartest fella in the world, Brother Matt, but a log is a little bit bigger than a speck. Which means if I got a board in my eye, the truth of the matter is I really can't see the speck in your eye. Which means when I think I'm looking at your speck, what I'm really looking at is my own log. Hello, somebody. So, now you had to pay $275 an hour for this in a counseling session. I ain't charging you nothing. I'm just asking to pay your tithes. Hello, somebody. Here's what we do. We tend to criticize in others the things that really exist in us. In the world of psychology, they call that projection. Let the church say projection. That is, you see your own shortcomings, your own sins, and your own dislikes, and you assign them to other people, when in reality, it's really you that you don't like. Talk back to him in his house. See, folk who are always mean, always critical, can always tell somebody else what's wrong is somebody who's really miserable in their own life. Are you hearing me? And I've discovered that haters will never allow for happiness to exist around them. If you really want to be happy, you better not ever hang out with folk that don't know what happiness looks like. Are you hearing me? I mean, I mean, come on now. If I can't find one good thing to say to you, and you my brother, my sister in the Lord, it's, it says more about my miserable life than it does about your dysfunction. Help me now. And when you project and assign your stuff to somebody else, it is then a short step to the assumption that if I continue to draw attention away from your mess and towards somebody else's mess, nobody will look closely at my mess. I can't get no help in here. See, that's why we do it. Because the whole idea is to take the spotlight off of you and put it on somebody else. And you think if they're steady watching somebody else, then they won't be looking at you. Let me rush to tell you. Not only will they know about somebody else, but they'll know about you. And while they won't discuss you with you, as soon as you leave, they're going to discuss you with somebody else. And a beam are made of the same compound. See, that's the other reason I can't judge you is because I'm dealing with the same stuff. Hello, somebody. I'm no better than you. I'm no holier than you. I don't care what my title is. I don't care what my degree says. I'm no more perfect than you because a beam ain't nothing but a whole bunch of specks packed together. Hello, somebody. Which means if you got a speck and I got a beam, we still both got some wood in our eye. Ain't nobody talking to me. Hey, why somebody here ain't saying that right now. I'm going to tell you why. That's because... We like to label certain things and then assign value to people based on the label. But the devil is a lie. A person who is struggling with their sexual identity ain't no worse than a drunk deacon or a pippin' preacher. Hello, somebody. A loose woman ain't no different than a lying quiet member. Come on, talk to me, somebody. See, we like to qualify sin, but I wish I had somebody. Whatever it is, whatever it looks like, if it ain't pleasing to God, it's still sin. I see what I'm saying.
see something else in the text? It's right there. It's right there. It's right there. It says, your misery can become your ministry. Somebody should have said something right there. It's a, it, the text suggests that your misery can become your ministry. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. One of the things that we do in the church, I don't know why we do it, it doesn't make good sense to do it, but we do it anyway. One of the things that we do in the church, especially when we're going through something, is that we try to find people that we think are perfect. We say, let me find somebody that's got us all together. Let me find somebody who ain't never done anything and maybe they can help me with what I'm dealing with. But watch verse number five. Jesus does not say don't deal with the speck in their eye. He doesn't say that. He, well, I wish I had somebody. He never says don't deal with it. He said don't judge. Watch the text. He says first, let the church say first. He said first, take the beam out of your eye. And then when you've dealt with what you're going through, it now deputizes you to help somebody else with what they're going through. So Jesus says, in order to minister to other people, the first thing you've got to do is admit you got some stuff. Mm. Deal with your stuff. And then let what has made you miserable become your ministry to help somebody else. What has been your embarrassment? Allow that to become your empowerment. Y'all ain't getting it. Y'all ain't getting it. Y'all ain't getting it. Y'all ain't getting it. See, my experiences, what I have overcome is what gives me authority to speak into your life about what's trying to overcome you. In other words, it's your struggles that qualify you to speak to somebody else's struggles. The fact that you have faced difficulty in your own life will give you insight on how to help somebody else deal with difficulty in their life. See, if you ain't never been through nothing, you ain't qualified to talk about nothing. Are you hearing me? See, challenges in your own relationship qualifies you to talk about somebody else's relationship. If you ain't never had crown royal on your lips, how you gonna tell somebody to get off the bottle? I wish I had some helpers in the house. <laughs> 